everybody. It's me, Laura Sanadella. I'm here today at the Chatham Pier. I'm coming to you live with the Blackstone Valley Art Association. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we're offering you today a free art class. We're going to paint this pier. I don't know if you can see it in the back, but there's there's um, a water down there. There's a harbor. There's a harbor master over here, and he's watching right now. Maybe he'll say hi later on. But this is a fishing pier, and um, we just saw the dog, dog fish. The dog fish were unloading earlier, and um, I'm posting some pictures later on of the show. So um, you're welcome to check us out, and it's www.artistlawsonadel.com. And Claudia will be posting that later on. She's here too. For surprise, we're here in Chatham, Massachusetts, and we hope that we brought you here virtually. We're going virtual for the um, Blackstone Valley Art Association during the pandemic to offer you an opportunity to learn. I'm going to quickly go through this painting and I'm going to try to tell you some things as we go along, but I'm not sure how the volume is working. I'm not sure how big these boats are and I'm not so sure how these engines are, but we're going to do the best that we can because that's all we got. So welcome. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'm going to talk about my palette. You might not see things as well. That's another problem that we're going to have out here. We're painting and plein air. When you paint outside, you need some sort of a sun protection. I'm wearing a thin um, polo men's dress shirt that I picked up a while back. I love the color yellow. You know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't take over the view that's there because I want you to be able to see. You can't see the seals, but surprise, there are a whole bunch of seals over here. There are hundreds of them. Someday we'll come back and maybe we can paint the seals. But for today, we're going to paint the harbor. There's a beautiful blue boat over there. And I hope that it doesn't move, but if it does, I'm an artist and I can improvise. You can paint your own at home. And I hope that you do. And if you do paint at home, you make sure you share it with us at the Blackstone Valley Art Association at bvaa.org. So I'm going to get started because I only have two hours to get this done and I'm going to go really fast. So if you don't get a chance to see this now, you can catch it later on on YouTube, bvaa.org on YouTube. So welcome. Here we are at the harbor. I'm going to turn my back to you from time to time as well. So there's a fog going on right now. I don't know if you can see that with my blue here. There's a fog in the, in the background here. And um, I want to paint that fog. But I'm not sure as the day goes on, I might lose my fog. But I'm going to do it right now. I've taken photographs that was references. And that's one of the things that I would like to share with you today. A tip and a trick is to always carry a camera. You know, this is going to change from time to time, and I'm going to have to marry the colors. Not that I want to stay in one place all the time, but that's what you have to do. We could paint on and on forever, because later on, the, the night light will come in, and we'll turn on all the outside lights on the boats. And it's beautiful, but that's another segment. So, um, join me today in plein air, Chatham, Massachusetts. Here we are. We're going to start with a, a blue. I use true blue. And now I'm going to talk to you about my colors as we go along. And I'm going to back up so that you can see what we're actually looking at. Because that's what we're interested in. And this is the harbor. And then I'm going to use a red. And I'm going to use a true red. I'm going to put it down on here so that you can see it. With the blue, I can get some sort of a purple color. A red and a blue making purple. Then I'm going to use yellow ochre. I like to use yellow ochre with that. And now I'm going to, if I mix all of these colors right here, I'm going to get a gel medium. My paints are artist grade paints. Um, if there's anything that I can recommend, is buy the best quality that you can and try to buy it on sale so you can buy more. So you can paint more. I try to paint every day. If I can't paint, I take photographs. If I can't take photographs, I sketch. There are times when I just paint on a little poster at a restaurant. But I'm thinking art. I'm always thinking art. And it helps me to stay fresh. Not that I'm like no internet sensation or anything, but this here in Chatham, Massachusetts is a beautiful day. This might get me some brownie points. What do you think? Can you hear me over the, um, 
engines. I don't know if they're engines or fans or whatever. But there are also people walking around. I'll back up from time to time so that you can see the atmosphere because as the fog lifts over the water, we're going to start to see more down there. And that's exciting. It's really exciting as an artist. I don't know if you've ever had that opportunity. But today you do because I'm going live here in Chatham, Massachusetts. So let's get started. We only have two hours, I told you, and now we have less. Maybe, you know, I can uh, go real fast here. We're going to get this purple color. It's almost like a black. I call it a black. I want to stain my canvas. That's what I'm doing now, is staining my canvas. I want to get all the color and get rid of all that white. But at the same time, I can focus on things. I'm going to focus on that sky, that fog. It's sort of a bluish, grayish, paints gray-like color. I'm using um, almost natural products. They have like a wax to them. If you want to look up the products, I don't represent any companies. I don't sell anything. I just come here and I paint live for free during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I hope that you learn something as we go. I'm going to share with you what I'm doing. From time to time, I'll turn my back so that you can see. And I'll step away from the camera. If you have any problems, be sure to send us a message. You can reach me at therainbowpalette at gmail.com or um, you can find me on my website at www.artistlaurasanadella.com And you can find all that information if you look on my Facebook page. To make it even more simpler, you can just send me a message through Messenger. And I hope that you enjoy yourself today. I'm here till 3 o'clock. Stop by if you want and say hi. I have trouble wearing my mask, so please keep your distance. Thank you. I talk about edges, you know, it's important to get your edges. This is a good time to get my edges because I'm doing the staining process. I'm using a very thin medium. I'm mixing some Gamasol with some um, gel. It's a gel medium. It's sort of like a Vaseline or a petroleum gel. But they say that it's, it's um, more natural than what I used to use. I've changed my products from time to time, but I tell you I like to use the artist grade products. Um, as much as possible. But you can't always find them when you go places. Like for instance, today we're in Chatham. And this is a fishing pier, so it's kind of loud. Um, not sure how much you can hear, but I talk about my mixing my colors and I'm using a blue. There's so many blues going on here that you can't really see anything right now because of the fog. We're gonna wait till the fog lifts to like put a lot of focus in this area, but in the meantime, we can get the underpainting done. So we're just gonna keep on going, and every time I go, I'm gonna use less medium. I call it go at it. Every time I do another layer, like for instance, in here, it's still too wet, but I could add some blue at it. But that would be another go, and I could pick up some more of the gel medium. I don't know how well you can actually see my palette, but this is the underpainting. This is my staining process that I do. Some people just take a, a paper towel or a rag. For instance, you could take a rag. I don't have any paper towels here with me. But you could take a rag and you could just move your paint around and stain the canvas. Because we're trying to make it so that the paint will adhere to it. You need to put a drying layer on there. And I've used an assistant in drying. I'm using two mediums. I'm using one-fifth of the Gamasol. That's my trick for today. I'm using one-fifth of the Gamasol to my um, paints. And my other medium is a gel medium. And I'm going to do it really fast so that we can get as much as we can get done today. I'm going to get my edges. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on focusing on my edges, but I want to make sure that I get some dark stain on the edges. My dark color dries faster because I'm using uh, yellow ochre, a real blue, and a real red. So 
So there's so much blue in this picture, but it's really not blue. If you look at it, there's some, some greens in there, and there's some purples in there, and there's some teals in there. And oh, my favorite color is a painless gray. It's a, a yellow ochre, red, and blue. And then I use more blue, and it makes it like a painless gray. So my color is almost purple, my, my initial color. I continue on for the next couple of hours I'll just continue adding layers of paint on here until eventually you begin to see the colors and the patterns of the objects that are in front of us. And I'm hoping today that I can show you those boats that are there. Right now there are two boats. Earlier there was only one boat. So I don't know how many boats are going to be in this picture today. But if you want to reference this spot, I have listed some of these images on my Facebook page. So you'll have an opportunity to find them later. I'll post some more. There are actually hundreds of seals across there. And um, I'll show you that later on. So stick with us. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this together. If you're painting from home, please share it with us. We'd love to see it. Most of my talking is so that I can wait for the drying time. There's a drying process that's going on right now between the, the three things. Because there's a beeswax in the paint. And then there's a, um, a gel medium and a gambasol. And I'm going to get these colors on here that are lovely, but that's really not what I'm painting. I'm just staining my canvas. And more or less, I'm wasting your time, but I'm waiting for the fog to lift over here. And I'm getting the first coat of paint on here. And I hope that you're happy to be here today. It's beautiful. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's uh, expected to be in the 70s, early 70s. There's a light breeze at like seven miles an hour. And there are so many birds, aren't they beautiful? I wish they'd stay still for me, but I have my camera for that. If I want to paint later on in the winter, I could take some of these images and I could paint it in the studio. But today, you're lucky because you get to join me in plein air. This is en plein air, Shadow Massachusetts, and I hope that you guys enjoy yourself. I'm going to keep on painting, and I told you I'm going to waste your time for it. Time to time, I'll just show you the view. I can take a break too and walk away from the camera, and you got the view. It's beautiful here today, so I hope you enjoy yourselves. And it's free, and if later on you don't get to sit here and you feel like you're trapped in front of this boring painting demonstration, you can check me out on YouTube where you can fast forward over all this jibber jabber and you can see what I finished at the end. I'll post this when I finish the painting. We're only here for about two hours today and I'm not 100% sure that I can finish this painting. But I picked a pretty simple um, composition that I can whip this out in about two hours. We'll see what we can do. But if I can't, make sure you check us out on Facebook or YouTube. primary colors. That's what I explained to you earlier. If you don't know this, this is primary colors. I'm using a blue, a true blue, a real red, a uh, yellow ochre, and I'm using some white. I'm only using the white today. It's not going to dry for a really long time, just so you know. Whites are really difficult. I use titanium and a painter's white, but they take forever to dry. So I don't like to use a lot of them, but I can subtract painting um, on here. With my little rag that I had before, I can bring out that island. See the little peninsula? It's a little peninsula over here. It's starting to come out in the fog. I can subtract it using my rag.
I still want to stay with the dark colors because I'm doing the underpainting now. As I keep going, I'm going to add more layers. But just so that you can see, I can lighten this area and this area up in here. I can also spread my paint so that it moves rather quickly. Again, we're here for two hours, so remember, you can look this up later on if it gets to be too boring. I'll try not to hold my back to you as much as I can, but there are times where I need to do that so that I can see what I'm actually painting. And we are lucky to go live here today. And I can share it with you. So I'm using a 16 by 20 cotton duck canvas. It's about, oh, I don't know, an in, inch and a half to two inches thick. I'm using a gallery wrap canvas. So one of the other things that I've done too is I've gone out my painting with a dry brush and I'm going to do that right now so that I can develop some character to the colors that I have on here. And I have a really good two inch brush that I can just like pull across here and I can lighten the amount of color that's here. My, um, board seems to be moving a little too much here. I have to adjust this. So what I have here is I have my painting. It's a 16 by 20 cotton duck canvas. It's on a um, easel. And I have a palette attached to my arm so that I don't throw anything. I'm using a two inch brush. I have a handful of brushes. I have many other brushes. How many brushes am I going to use today? Everybody asks that question. I'm not sure. I don't have time to figure that out. If I like, have to go really fast because the light is changing, I might go through like 20 brushes. If I go um, really slow and I, I'm really like feeling the day and I'm just chilling, I might only use one or two brushes. But you might make sure that you change your brushes from time to time because you're... Um, your paintbrush will change the texture of your painting and it will create some um, some sort of um, depth. Depth is really good to start with the darks and lean into the lights on creating depth. So let's, let's start going. Let's add some of this blue. I like this blue here, but I know that when the light changes, it's going to change. There's some green underneath one of those boats. And remember, I said I'm not sure these boats are going to be here when I get to that point. But I could block out an area for those boats right now. By just using a dry brush, I can take away some of the paint here. And I'm going to determine, I'm going to draw where I'm going to put things. I'm going to determine where I'm going to put things. And then it might not be light enough for you guys to see it at home because I draw. dry I'm going to switch so now I'm going to now I want to erase some rags I'm going to use a thinner rag so over in the fog you can see like a dune or something starting to appear I don't know if you can see that at home if you can't don't worry because we'll post some images on Facebook and if you were here today watching us, you get a bonus. I'll send you a greeting card, a print of one of my um, pieces if you like, share, and um, comment. It would be great to hear your comment today. If you were here in Chatham and you were enjoying yourself, or you were with your family, you know, oh, I'm really starting to see a lot of the land now is starting to come through. But I want to work on that. I want to keep um, moving my colors around as I'm waiting for my drying time. I'm going to use 
lighter colors every time I make any come around. I'm going to work on my island now, just so I don't lose it back in there in the fog. Whoops. Too much of that gamosol. No, no, don't use too much of the gamosol because it will start to crackle. Move this along. Isn't this amazing? We get to go live today while we're here watching the fog lift. So how are we doing at home? Anybody um, do it in the art? Anybody have anything they want to talk about or share with us? We're here. I don't know um, if Claudia is that online. Maybe she can share with me. But things are going well. Anybody making comments? Make sure you make comments because it makes me feel like I'm doing something that means something. I'm coming to you live today for free where I'm demonstrating painting in the shadow here. And it's beautiful. The fog is just about to lift. And the colors are coming out in the sky. And it's amazing. You get to see this here, live. You at home. But my thing's drying, and I'm just wasting your time again. So I want to um, add some painter's white to this because it'll help it dry faster. The white doesn't really dry, so I'm going to focus on things in the areas that I'm going to leave, or I can erase. secondary colors. I'm going to add a yellow hue and I'm going to use a rose because I believe that they're going to add that pop. But that's those colors that are going to make this thing like pop. Um, not sure how much we're going to get done as I said earlier, but we're going to try to make this pop. Pretty cool. This is a um, 16 by 20 and it's called an edge canvas. You paint the edges and you don't have to frame it. Galleries will take this without a frame. But mostly I frame all my paintings because I'm obsessed with frames as well. The frames have to match my art and the art matches my frames and so on and so forth. But um, this one here you don't need to frame. This is called the edge. It's rather pricey but it, it's worth it. It's also easy for me to carry around. So thank you for that question. That's important. Framing can get really expensive, and I know that a lot of galleries require that you frame. It's not always the case. Okay, because we're just going to keep painting. 
technically we're still staining our canvas. We're just adhering the paint. The color comes later, much later. We're almost there, then. Be patient. Um, you have to be patient with oil paints. They take a long time to dry. But I'm going really thin. so exciting that we're actually going to start to see the painting of the fog work. And I hope that you stay with us and I hope that I don't hear you and I'll try to talk to you from time to time. But really what I'm here for today is to paint and I'm welcoming you to paint with me live here in Chatham, Massachusetts. Enjoy. asked me like where do you stop when do you stop painting i don't know i mean there are some people that would be considered abstract this would be considered abstract right now at this level but i'm not going to stop there i'm going to go a little more realistic i have about two hours to get this done and i'm going to keep going so i hope you um, learn something if you want you can ask questions i'm more than willing to help share what i know with you we're going live today free due to the pandemic. I know that it's a hard time and I hope that this helps ease that for some of you. I'm going to switch on um, the
so you know what? I have another tip for you. When you're out here, when I talked about wearing uh, sun clothing. This is a great lightweight shirt to wear. But I also have another trick. I strap my um, pallet to my arm, so excuse me for a second. I clip a baseball cap to my belt loop. And I can block out the sun and I can start to see a little bit clearer. You can see that the um, land is starting to form over there and I'm hoping that it will begin to form over here as well. So I put on my cap and I'll go back to work. I know, we've been here. We've been there.
while that truck was here, I thought that I would get a chance to move my um, canvas around a bit. I want to make sure that I'm pretty much where I used to be. And I'm going to take a drink. I'm going to step back and I'm going to give you a good check that out. So besides being here at the um, pier, we also have the um, Chatham Pier Fish Market, which serves uh, fish dinners, seafood, powder, powder beverages, and the cool stuff. You can see the Chatham and you can see that the, um, oh, we have a seagull, can you see him? We get awfully close sometimes, so see go. I want to like hurry this up because I have um I don't know how much time plenty of will be. So, right? focus on this area over here. I want to make sure that I get that um, area here. I don't want to lose my light. Sometimes I'm taking notes. I'm taking um, so I'm adding a lot of white in here, which I don't normally do, but for demonstration purpose, I want to make sure that this dries rather fast. What I mean by dry is this could take up to a year to dry, but it dries enough that we can adhere, and I'm adding to it some additives to speed up the drying time. at some point where I'm going to keep this painting. If I'm going to paint six hours, which is a great time, a painting like this would be about, it would be great if I could come here early in the morning, get the stain on in the afternoon, I would start to adhere all my colors. But since we only have about an hour now, an hour, we're going to just whip through this. And I'm not going to best pieces. But I'm going to share this with you and I hope that you learn something.
move to another form of land back there. We're going to need to put that in the painting back in here. This is the grass patch with the green here. And then there's a whole other piece of land popping up over here. We're going to make that pop up here. I'm just using a little bit of yellow ochre and white. You can see a little bit of that land, but I'm not so sure what's going on over there. think about like interest like do we think that this is interesting enough or do we like add some of the boats and I kind of like the fact that there's like one two three boats in a row it kind of shows you now there's four there's actually four boats in the harbor now and I'm not so sure how much I'm going to put them in there but I can block out areas or I can just come right at it and put that boat in there like my I'd say the best boat that I like right now would be this dark blue one I can just pop that in here. But that's the blue that I need for everything else. So I'm going to go back to my black, which is a red, a yellow ochre, and a blue. And I can put that boat in here using the darker colors. And there's a reflection growing off of that boat. There's a reflection right there um, under the boat. So it's one this way and one this way. Add 
there's a um, definite design in the um, fogs over here where the fog is looking. I'm going to make sure that I don't lose it. I did a feathering and a paint together because there is an awful lot of paint on it. Not really like a lot, not like if I put it on with a palette knife, but enough that I need to help it dry and then move it around and assist it. It's sort of like a soupy consistency. I don't know if you can see that at home. I'm working from my darkest darks and I know this that I need to um, keep them going. This is where the seals are up on the beach. There's a whole mound of them over there. I don't know, maybe hundreds of them. I like how the land comes around like a hook. And then it comes down like a hill. There's like a hill over there. So I should probably direct the hill. This is like going with the grain. You know, I talked about going with the grain. You want to direct the hill. There's like a hill of um, dune over here. There's some grass. So I'm going for my darkest color. So I'm going to go with the more of a bluish, greenish color here. But I don't want to lose that gold, so I can come back and I can subtract it, I told you before, I can use a, a rag and I can just subtract what I don't want in here. You see my colors from before, underpainting, it's, it's starting to develop something. I want to make sure that I stay within the grain and show that he's in the darkest colors. So over in here now, I want to switch brushes. I don't know if you can still hear me. I don't know if anybody is making a comment. But I don't think I can hear you. Right. I think the truck again is going to get really loud. It's a lobster truck. Lower 
through this section here of the dune to get more of a perspective. Again, I'm just moving my colors around just to stay in the canvas and, and hope that every color that I add, it starts to develop something. Oh, the seals are coming closer. I don't know if you can see, but on the left side, it's on my left. I don't know if it's your left or right. Is it left or right? I don't know. But on um, my left, where the flag is, the building where the flag is on the left, there is a a picture so that you can so I'll back up and you can get a full view of what we're doing like done the staining process and we have less than an hour so I'm going to go through this really quick and I'm going to probably put all the paint on here with a palette knife I've gone fast with the staining process I now can see a third layer of land over there there's a large front layer, and then in the mid-ground, and then in the ground, there's even another piece of land coming through over here. So we're going to put this land in and over here. I'm going to put this down. And I'm going to pull out my palette knife, because I think I've got to go and what we're going to do. But now we need to get fast because we only have a short amount of time. You're welcome to join me where we will spend about four to six hours making something like this that I'm going to show you today. We may not finish it, but please check us out on YouTube.
not dark enough to be the asphalt. Like, for instance, there's a big truck down there now sitting on that asphalt. That's going to need to be some blue and some red and yellow over. That's not blue enough. Too much red. Red's one of those colors that's really strong and there's very little red. More blue, I use a lot of blue. But I paint things that are blue too. Like blue. Blue and blue. Uh, I'm Claudia can always ask me if I was writing a letter or, um, you know, talking out loud. Um, so that we have a few minutes now. It's important that we get the questions done because at 3 o'clock, we don't know what's going to happen, but I'm probably going to shut off. See, my colors are purplish. See the purple is? I have a lot of paint on here right now, and I'm going to work it into my canvas. Still don't have any idea on um, blocked out an area here for shadow for my boat. There's some sort of a reflection now. But I don't want to lose it. I don't want to spread in the color. So my land is beginning to take form. And it's beginning to show as well. The fog is lifting, as I said before, it may never lift. I mean, that's good color for you. It's beautiful color. Color very good. Okay. Putting some darker colors back in. And sometimes I need to go back like dark white. Okay, okay. I like that green that's down there now. There's a green down there now that may not have been there earlier. I need to put that in here. I get all that gold, it's yellow, ochre, yellow, and too white. Again, I have a lot of um, medium on here from earlier. I don't really know how much medium. I need to get some color on here. I need to get this to start to develop.
the, the fog is coming back in and I have an opportunity to spread my color. I hope that you guys enjoyed yourselves today. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you check back with us from time to time. Again, I know representing the products. I'm here today with the Blackstone Valley Art Association and other nonprofit organizations so that I can share with you the plein air event that I held here in Chatham, Massachusetts with the Chatham here. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in the week of four. I'm going to continue to paint, and each time that I paint, I'm going to over here more color. And I hope that if you are here today and you're watching us here on YouTube, for instance, you can send me some of your images, because I don't have a chance to keep watching. But it's beautiful. There's seals over there. They're starting to pile up. I told you there are hundreds of them in the there's now three boats, four boats that I can see from here. I may not see these boats the whole time that I'm here, but I hope that I do. And I hope that I get a chance to finish this painting at some point, but for today, we're not gonna finish this painting, but I'm gonna get as much as I can done in the little time that I have. I'm just gonna keep on working on it.
going to be outside by people, you know. Um, make sure that you stay at least six feet away and wear your mask. I'll be right back. So unfortunately, I have to leave them out of the picture. There are large birds flying by from time to time. And I might want to take note of that, because that might be one of those things that helps to identify this location, would be maybe one of the birds. So I don't know if you can see the seagulls flying over, but there are some other birds as well. And I hope that you check this place out. You can learn more if you go to the Mass um, Wildlife and Fishery. So, let's see, where are we now? We're gonna pick up the palette because I think that I can see a little bit of color that I can add. I want it to dry rather fast, so I'm sort of helping it along, but I'm gonna use a palette now. To put on some of my colors so that I don't lose them. I like that blue that's going on in here. There's not a real blue, there's a little bit of yellow in it.
it sort of goes down and across. It's important. I have a lot of pain on my edges so I can get my edges done at this point.
time now, but I want to be able to get something on my feet. And not so much talking. You've got 25 minutes. We've got about 25 minutes, what it is, so I'm going to put some of this uh, wave action that's going on in here. And I'm going to make it real simple. I'm showing you that I'm doing simple strokes. I'm just looking at The further away you are, it's supposed to be the lighter. So in here, I have a lighter color, but it's going to need to be like a lighter teal color. So in a way, it's a, it's a fog, so it's even harder. I'm going to have to blend it even more. So if I would had six hours, I would be able to finish this painting. But unfortunately, we only had two hours here today. But I wanted to share with you, this is Chatham, Massachusetts. And I'm coming to you live with the Blackstone Valley Art Association. And again, if you follow along and you paint with us, we'd love to see your images. Send it to the BVAA.org. Or you can reach me at therainbowpalette at gmail.com. And I'm wasting your time again because there's a long process in drying with oil paints. You have to be patient if you're going to be an oil painter. Or you could be fast with your palette knife and you could get this paint on here really fast. But I'm not that fast and I take my time. experiencing a lot of fog again right now, but I can still see the seals, so we're good. We can keep on going, but there's some water that's starting to come up over in here somewhere. Another layer. Not necessarily is the site. There's, there's front. 
then the, the water where the ocean is, this is where the boats come in. You get to see the dogfish. They look like little baby sharks. And you come off the boat. Today, you would know that there are a lot of seagulls flying there. You may not want to keep them there, but I can just make a little bit of a notation. I mean, it's actually here. Because that might add something to this piece. For instance, if I were to put a fuel thing in there something for this piece but I'm not there yet I still have to do layers this takes about um, four to six okay I'm going and I'm going to keep moving it around I'm going to take some of this and put it over here and some of this and put it over there and I'm going to move it around really fast and I'm going to hope that while I'm here on good time but most likely Finishing the studio. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So there are people here. I'm not alone. I can't see this area right now because the fog came in. And
guys enjoyed yourself. We're done. Here we are. This is the best that I can come up with. Chatham, Massachusetts. Laura Senegala. Oh.